The other day I came across Andrew Huberman's recommended and supposedly amazing sleep cocktail. In this video, I want to review that very cocktail, talk about the things that I like, the things that I don't like, and how to improve on it to get even better results. Let's get started. Okay, so here's the video of him talking about the ideal cocktail of supplements to take before going to sleep. My favorite sleep cocktail based on really good, solid, peer-reviewed science is magnesium threonate and something called apigenin. Those two things work really well to, they essentially shut down the forebrain thinking, anticipating part of your brain, allow you to drift off into sleep really well. Oh, I need that all day yeah. then. Well, and then theanine is the third thing in the cocktail. So theanine also turns on what's called the GABA system. It's like an inhibitory neurotransmitter and it helps suppress anxiety and kind of turn off thinking. It helps you make the transition into sleep. So to recap, the three ingredients of his cocktail are magnesium threonate, epigenin, and theanine, or thionine. He doesn't talk about the individual doses of each ingredient, but I'll get to that later. Let's first review each ingredient and see if it actually does what it's supposed to do, help you sleep. The best nutrient here to start with is magnesium because it's the one that has the most studies backing its effect. Basically, magnesium is a calming mineral. It does this in several ways. In your brain, it blocks the action of adrenaline, so it works like a natural beta blocker, which by itself can be calming since adrenaline is a stimulating neurotransmitter, and when it's blocked, that stimulating effect will be minimized. Another way of how magnesium can calm you down is by binding and activating GABA receptors. GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter, so unlike adrenaline, which gets you going, GABA does the opposite. It basically lessens the ability of your body's cells, especially your nerve cells, to receive signals or impulses. So the more GABA receptors are activated, the less your nervous system will react to stimuli. This helps with symptoms of anxiety and fear, for example. Since magnesium is an important cofactor for the activation of GABA receptors, if you're magnesium deficient, all this won't work properly. So you're constantly stuck in fight or flight. This is called sympathetic dominance and it is very common, not just because magnesium deficiency is very common nowadays, but because we all live very stressful lives and don't take the time to calm down and relax properly. Now, Huberman doesn't just recommend magnesium, but a very special kind of magnesium called magnesium threonate. That's magnesium bound to threonic acid which is a vitamin C derivative. The reason he recommends this type of magnesium is because there are studies that have shown it to be absorbed quickly and fairly good at crossing the blood-brain barrier. This is good if you want a very quick effect on your brain, which you want if you want to fall asleep. But there are some websites that claim that magnesium threonate is the only form of magnesium that will reach the brain and cross the blood-brain barrier. This is false. Huberman doesn't say that, so I'm not criticizing him here, but several brands that sell magnesium threonate claim that this is the only magnesium that works that way. Fortunately, this isn't true, and we know that most types of magnesium eventually reach the brain. So you don't need to specifically buy this type of magnesium to increase the magnesium content in your nervous system and brain. Mag threonate might do it quicker, so this can be an advantage, but it's also a lot more expensive than other types. Also, one more thing before we get to the next nutrient, you want to make sure to take magnesium regularly throughout the day and not just right before you go to sleep. It's a lot easier for the body to absorb small amounts of magnesium than a large chunk at one specific time. The optimal magnesium dosage is very individual, so I can only give you rough guidelines here but I would take somewhere between 200 to 500 milligrams in the form of supplements, depending on your current magnesium status. If you don't know your magnesium status, then either get it tested or stick with a lower dose of maybe two to 400 milligrams. Because keep in mind that high doses of magnesium can interact with other nutrients in your body, such as calcium. Like I said before, you want to split this up into several smaller doses, such as three doses of 100 milligrams or 150 milligrams. And in that case, the 150 milligrams would also be what you would take in your cocktail at night. 
The next nutrient he mentions is epigenin, and it's a bioflavonoid that is found in chamomile tea. It appears to have antioxidative properties, be good for your immunity, inflammation markers, and anxiety. Unfortunately, it's not as well researched as magnesium, and I would say, at least in my experience, it's the least potent of the three ingredients. I personally would take it out, but you can try it out yourself because the reaction to bioflavonoids is always individual. It might help you more than it did me. Epigenin supplements usually come in a dosage from 50 to 200 milligrams, but there are also some higher dosed ones at around 500 milligrams. Depending on where you live, it can be expensive. So like I said before, I would either take it out, just try it once, or get it from chamomile tea instead. The last ingredient of the cocktail we need to talk about is thionine. Thionine is a non-protein amino acid. That means it's not used to build tissue in the body, but it still has other functions and biochemical reactions. The most important here would be for neurotransmitter control. Now, thionine isn't a sedative, so it doesn't actively make you tired, but it still helps you with sleep quality. It does this by balancing your brain waves, so the electrical voltages that send signals in your brain and between cells. This actually not only helps with sleep, but also with other things. I used to take thionine along with caffeine before my workouts. Because I don't drink coffee, I would always feel a little giddy when taking high doses of caffeine. Thionine helped reduce that feeling, but still preserve the energy boost that you get from the caffeine. If you want to try out thionine yourself, either for sleep improvement or as a pre-workout together with caffeine, I recommend you go with a product that has 100 to 200 milligrams. Great, now that we looked at the individual ingredients of the cocktail, is it any good? Is Huberman onto something here? And I would say yes, it is a fairly good sleep cocktail. I would definitely endorse it. But keep in mind that magnesium and thionine are the most important factors here. Just fixing a magnesium deficiency, which by the way, it can take a while, it's not done in a couple of days, can do wonders for your sleep quality. A lot of people are magnesium deficient. If I wanted to optimize the cocktail, here's what I would do. I would leave out the epigenin or just make a strong chamomile tea instead. And then on top of the two remaining ingredients, I would also add some calcium and some zinc, which are two other calming minerals. In both cases, you kind of have to be a little more careful than with magnesium because there can be side effects. I have videos on how to take them correctly and what to do when you get side effects. With calcium, there's always the potential of tissue calcification. And with the zinc, you can kind of run into problems if you have too much biounavailable copper, which will be pushed out if you take high doses of zinc. Lastly, you could also add some vitamin B6 because it helps with melatonin synthesis and dream recall, but the side effects to vitamin B6 are even more common than to calcium and zinc, especially when you take it in the form of P5P. So please be careful with that supplement and go slow and start with a low dosage. Another good combination of calming nutrients would be choline and inositol, and they don't necessarily have to be taken right before going to bed. Just make sure you get enough throughout the day. And for both, sunflower lecithin is my recommended supplement slash food source. As always, I also recommend you get your nutrient levels tested correctly, and if you run into problems, reach out to a professional who can help you with your diet and supplement regimen. I hope you like this video, and I see you in the next one.